All right. Good morning, good evening, good night. This is another lecture video. Today we are here to talk about circular motion. And um, basically the whole idea of circular motion is we'll go through a few examples and look at things moving in a circle, specifically starting with the kinematics and also forces behind it. So we're going to rewind time back to the beginning of your AS. Let's okay, go. welcome to a new chapter. Here you see me doing the video trick called hashtag circular motion. Ah, yeah, very nice one for scenery. You can go and try it out. I created it. It's literally the name of the chapter. So in this chapter, you're going to learn about how things move in a circle, why things move in a circle, and all the math and physics behind that. Okay, so let's get started and see what's behind this circular motion. Okay, so we're going to start off with the kinematics here. All right. So as you can see, what I have here is a circular part drawn out in a black circle. And I will show you uh, two particles traveling from one point to another point on a circular part. So if you look at the particular drawing, um, the radii or the radius is indicated and the particle will move from A to B. All right. And let's say it sweeps through an angle of theta because it's traveling in a circle. Ma, so we can always use angles. To describe so let's say theta here is the angular displacement okay so we have linear displacement which is the actual arc length and then there's also angular displacement which is the angle swept by a particle when traveling from a to b so i'm pretty sure or at least i really hope that you know that the relationship between theta and s will be s is equal to r theta r here being the radius of the circular part Okay, making sure that whenever you do this, theta is in radians. Okay, and uh, I'm pretty sure you know how to convert, but if not, you'll be doing it in your exercise, converting uh, degrees to radian. All right, so sometimes, although this is a maths question, they will ask you to define the radian. So to define the radian, right, we normally will let theta be equal to one radian. Okay, and Define the radian, ma, one radian. So when we substitute uh, one radian into the equation, what you will get is S is equal to R. So from here, uh, we can define the radian as the angle, because radian is an angle, subtended at the center of the circle, where the arc length S is equal to R. Where the center of the at the center of the circle, where the arc length S is equal to its radius R. Okay. So there are normally two points in this definition. Angle subtended at the center of a circle is one mark. Arc length equal to radius. Very right? mathematic definition, but basically if the angle is one radian, the radius and the arc length is the same. Okay, of course, if we have displacement, we must have velocity. So angular velocity. The symbol is omega, is defined as the rate of change of angular displacement. All right. So for angular displacement, we will take d theta dt. Welcome to A2, where we won't shy away from calculus anymore. Okay. So for one complete revolution, we will assume that theta, not assume that we know that theta is 2 pi. So then the time taken for one complete revolution is also known as the period. So another way to find omega is to take 2 pi divided by period. This will be very useful is also in the subsequent chapters. All right. So since we know S is equal to R theta, we are going to differentiate both sides with respect to time. So I'm going to put the S dt is R d theta dt. Because R is a constant, I can immediately plug it out. So I will get V is equal to R omega. Because the S dt is V and d theta dt is omega. All right. So depending on what you are looking for, they will have <coughs> you use different equations. Ah. Okay. So the unit for omega is radian per second or second because radian is actually not a unit. Radian is something divided by something. Ah. S divided by R. No unit. No? So anyway, if you look at the equations, you definitely can find a certain pattern because on one hand, you have all the linear linear proportions. S, V, and A. So you have S is equal to R theta, V is equal to R omega, and A is equal to R alpha. So everything on the left-hand side is linear. 
and uh, as we continue you can find that everything on the right hand side is rotational kinematics okay so because this is rotational kinematics 101 we are going to assume that for all of the questions discussed in uniform circular motion that your alpha is zero so your particle is not turning faster and faster or turning slower and slower it is turning at the same omega like miss ellie and her camera rotating at the same speed okay so it doesn't rotate faster or slower so with that in mind if you intend to do any form of further mechanics later in your studies your alpha will not be zero okay and then we can use all the linear kinematics equation with modification okay so if you look at the uh, definition so far it is actually very uh, throwback to your linear kinematics you start off with displacement and then with velocity and normally this is where you stop when you learn basic kinematics in your early early years your before you started your SPM or your IGs even okay so and then after that we tell you that something is accelerating and then you cannot use the equation that looks like this la, theta over t okay but right now it's not accelerating so all this equation can still be used so you have s is equal to r theta and then you have v is equal to r omega so they can be interchangeable linear can change to rotational and rotational can change back to linear provided you already have a value for the radius okay so let us continue okay so after we have this thing in mind we can describe how far it has moved we can describe how fast it's moving as you can see i'm labeling now now we're going to try to label the velocity so the velocity is tangential right to the path like your projectile so let's say the velocity at point a is va the vector va and at point b the vector vb and then you will also notice that the magnitude of va and vb must be the same because the particle is not rotating faster and slower and it has to be tangential to the path so the first observation that i have is that va and vb is obviously in a different direction because it's a circular path now if you want to be tangent to a circular path you will not be in the same direction if you're at different points so this shows that the direction of velocity changes all the time along a circular path and since velocity is a vector when the direction change velocity changes so we can say that the particle is accelerating when moving in a circle and the direction of acceleration is directed directed towards the center of the circular part c directed towards the center is known as centripetal so we call this the centripetal force okay and if there's acceleration there's force so we can also call this the centripetal acceleration all right so if there's acceleration because the velocity is changing we can then infer that a resultant force is necessary for an object to travel in circular motion okay and we're going to call this centripetal force so the main idea here is you can look at the vector components they will change direction if they change direction they change velocity if velocity change there's acceleration the acceleration will pull the particle towards the center okay if not it cannot maintain the circular part now. so that acceleration that's directed towards the center is known as centripetal acceleration and because of this we know that a resultant force is necessary for the object to travel because for you to have acceleration you must have force newton's second law okay so we need a resultant force to pull the particle into a circle and that resultant force has a very special name called centripetal force but it is still a resultant force it is not a new type of force it is a new consequence of a resultant force right to cause that thing to travel in a circle all right let's continue so is to provide you need net force to provide centripetal force so in the subsequent discussion you can see that I will now try to prove an expression for centripetal acceleration and centripetal force okay 
So right now, right, I'm going to have to think about the proof. And if I want to find acceleration, I need to look for the change in velocity. So maybe I'll take VA minus VB, okay, divided by the time taken for the particle to move from A to B. So let's say that time is T, all right. And because this thing is a vector, right, to find VA minus VB, I cannot obviously take the magnitude and subtract, lah, because then that would be zero, right? So what I have to do is actually to draw a vector diagram of VA plus negative VB. So you can see I have created VA, the first arrow, and the second arrow, negative VB, is in the opposite direction of uh, positive VB. So this uh, diagram, this arrow here, the down arrow, is VA. This arrow on top is negative VB. You can see these two is opposite direction. So when you have VA plus negative VB, you will get the, the option that you want. Okay, so you have this. This one would be negative VB. This one is VA. So you can find that this is VA and this is negative VB. All right. And what we'll do is we will just draw the resultant with a different color. And this red color is the resultant vector of VA minus VB. Also throw back to your AS. So you have problem with vector diagrams, please address them, okay? Try some question, come and ask me. So basically now, right, we want to find the length of the red arrow. If not, cannot use the equation, ma, all right? So to find the length of the red arrow, I'm going to have to find another similar triangle. Now, I don't know about you, but um, this is also a triangle. You can see this here. And the angle here is theta. You see this angle here is theta. And this is also an isosceles triangle. This is also an isosceles triangle. So this triangle technically can be similar triangle to the vector triangle that I draw. But I'm going to now assume that theta is small. So if theta is small, right, the arc AB and the chord or the straight line AB is about the same. Okay, if you want the proof for this, you can come and talk to me personally. So this AB can be approximated to be equal to this arc because theta is very small. Uh. Okay, if the radius is very big, then it's about the same length. Uh. Alright, come and ask me uh, if you still cannot see. So because of this, right, I can say um, this 2 is R and that one is S. So you can find that these triangles are similar. So triangle CAB will be equal to triangle, let's say this is PQR, so triangle QPR. Okay, similar triangles. Because the triangles are similar, what I can do is I can use ratio to help me find VA plus negative VB or VA minus VB. Okay, so let's look back at the triangle. We're going to now look at the, uh, we're going to use, choose a side lah, because it's similar triangle. So let's say I take S divided by R here, S divided by R, then it will be VA minus VB because this is the length that's opposite the angle theta divided by VA. Okay, the magnitude is the same lah. So it doesn't matter whether you take VA or VB, it's R and R, okay? So once that is done, um, we can now probably do some form of substitution or manipulation such that VA and VB is uh, represented. So VA minus VB will be equal to SVA over R, okay? But if I want to find acceleration, I will divide both sides by T, there. So I'm going to divide both sides by T. Okay, divide this side by T. So that uh, when I divide by T, I have S over T. And since the acceleration is zero or the motion is uniform, S over T can be substituted with V. Okay, so this is acceleration, centripetal acceleration AC. This one is V. And VA can also be substituted by V because VA is equal to VB and equal to V. So I put all these together, I get centripetal force, oh, sorry, sorry, centripetal acceleration is V squared over R. So we're going to substitute, substitute V is equal to R omega inside, and we will arrive 
at r omega squared. Okay. Also, because Fc is equal to m ac, so centripetal force represented by Fc will be equal to mv squared over r. Or sometimes we can use mr omega squared. So both equations are important. Okay, uh, you use the equation depending on the question, all right? But the important thing here is also making sure that you understand that centripetal force itself is a net force. So whenever you have a system, right, the, and the, we are telling you that the system or the object or the car is moving in a circle, look for the net force and equate it to centripetal force, okay? And make sure that everything you use mr omega square all that will be in si units lah okay so that is the entirety i think yes yes it is the entire thing of the first part where we looked at the kinematics of circular motion starting with this part how do we describe the displacement and velocity of an object moving in a circle knowing that it's moving in a circle the direction of v will change meaning it will accelerate so we have found an expression of the acceleration acceleration using a vector diagram and similar triangles. All right. So um, the proof will not be asked from you during the exam, obviously. But it's just nice to know where it comes from, Don't you think? Okay. So anyway, here you you need to know the expression for centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. If you know one, you will know the other one, Okay. I wouldn't say these two red boxes are new equa different equations. They are the same one. Just substituting V equal to R omega into this first equation will give you the second one. All right. So I'm going to catch you in the second video where we will apply this equation. See you there.